Hello, and in today's STM32 programming, we are going to be covering the I2C. For the basic setup, I've selected I2C number two, so the second I2C module on this particular STM32 chip. For the setup, I'm using standard mode. You get fast mode. Standard mode will cover 90% of your use cases. Most likely, I've set the clock frequency to 100 kilohertz. You can see here the I2C speed must be between one and 100,000. You do get faster speeds for I2C, but this is the absolute maximum and it does cover 90% of use cases. No clock stretch mode. Also, a case of this is more or likely not useful. 7 bit address spacing you can set to the 10 bit on this one as well, but for the chip that I'm interfacing with, this is 7 bit is what we will need. Dual address acknowledgement, not that important. Primary slave address, we are going to be using this in master mode so the slave address has no bearing to this and i can't quite remember what this call address detection is but can refer to it in the data sheet or someone can comment it down below then i have enabled the dma channels on channel four and five as well as the event interrupt and the i2c error interrupt is currently disabled then on dma settings just our two dma channels for outgoing and incoming so data width is byte size for the incoming data channel and then the outgoing data channel we also have them as byte size so i've already generated the code over here and we can see in our i2c.c file we have our handles as well as our dma channels we have the initialize function here we can see which i2c instance speed duty cycle its own address so this will be your slave address and this is a secondary slave address addressing type 7 bit dual addressing is disabled and general call is disabled and no clock stretch mode so that's that and then we have our msp net and our msp d net so the only function that is publicly available unless you add it yourself will be mx i2c init now i've wrote a c++ wrapper for this so in the header file i've included i2c.h which is the generic c files isr hull and circular buffer this is for future use then the number of i2c drivers that we are running as a defined so currently this will be one for this particular stm we can have a maximum of two rx buffer 64 that's more for later when we get to the interrupts and the dma and just a enumerator for determining if we're in interrupt mode or dma mode so i have a class here which is the base class for itc initialize the itc deinitialize the itc start up the itc driver then three functions which is write read transfer and then pointer to our handles and our instance and if our driver is in it so in our c file we have our constructor and then our static is in it um is in it booleans so we transfer the handle to the private variable and the instance also to the private variable then we call the init function and the init function checks if it is a if this is an instance of i2c1 you can find this if you open declaration you can see it over here so if it's i2c2 or i2c1 okay that's interesting this is out of scope this should be let's make our i2c count 2 here and this should function fine if it's i2c2 or is in or d init should also be 1 then okay so it checks if we are initialized then we return if we are not initialized we set initialized to true and then we call the mx i2c net that has been generated for us all right then in our destructor we simply call the whole i2c d net and pass it a handle for the driver and we set in it to false and we return so if you have a second i2c you'll just add the additional instance as i2c one over here or how many ever you have then we have our i2c write function which takes in the address of the device the tx data we want to send to the device the size of the data that we want to send and a timeout so the timeout i have set as a default of 1000 so one second timeout in our write function we check is the tx size zero if it's zero return and poll error if tx data is null we also return all error otherwise we do a i2c transfer and the i2c transfer function is located in 
in the STM, STM32F1XX underscore hall I2C dot C. So this is where the function resides. It has the documentation on it. Not too fancy at all. And if we go back to our I2C, you can see we pass in the handle and then the data that we pass in for the particular instance. Then we have a read function that does effectively the same as the write function. The only difference is it calls the I2C master receive function which is located in the same place as transmit. Then a transfer function I won't be using this today but this effectively combines the read and the write. We just call the write function that we declared up here and then the read function. If you're wondering why I'm using this pointer write it's because write can be a reserved function in some C compilers. Then we simply just return our error. All right so that is the I2C class itself. Now in the main itself I've declared some states for a state machine so we're writing our write is done we read and our rx is done so just the before and because we're using the blocking method the tx done and T uh, rx done are not necessarily needed then I have a definition for an rtc which is a union and just splitting out the registers of the date time that I'm particularly interested in if we look at the data sheet of the rtc so you can see register zero is the seconds so you can see seconds is over here and then the seconds is also split into its nibbles and then we go basically register zero all the way down to the year register which is over here so register six and then i've just split it up into three different methods of accessing the data something useful that's not present in c but is in c plus plus you can attach functions to unions and structs so i've built a constructor for this union which basically just clears it out typically you won't be using memset as a side note some for this particular application it is fine since we are only using primitives and then i just have a function that converts the date to a string function so s in print f we take in a constant char string and we just declare its length and that will print out our year month date then the day of the week the hour minutes and seconds we have date to int which simply just converts a string date to a numerical date so i declare a month that contains the three characters plus a null terminator and then i just copy the data out and this just makes it a bit simpler to do the string comparison of the pointer so this will return a uint8 as the date and then a function that calculates the day of the week i think i copied this from stack overflow if i remember correctly uh, we have our standard functions we create a type of um, the i2c state so for the state machine and we initialize it as tx write i initialize the dma this is currently being unused then i declare a instance of i2c base and we give it the i2c instance and then the handler for it now the handler is declared in the i2c.c file and then extend in the .h file so that you can access it okay we just initialize a uart so that we can print stuff out to the console we create a read buffer this 256 is complete overkill then we have a date string which is 23 characters long and we clear that out just initialize an error variable i don't believe i'm actually really using this in the code and now we get the month by using the compile time macro for the date so this one translates to 4 may 2024 okay so that's a string we convert that to a int and then then we extract the year code from from the string so the 2024 just multiply that out to an integer got the dates uh, integer and we just extract that 04 out and then multiply it out as an integer and then we take our date month and year and we convert that to a integer of day of the week plus one uh, this is a quirk of the rtc does not have a day zero it has a day from zero one to seven so this gives you a day of the week from zero to six this plus one just offsets that then we create a structure of the date and then we just take our date variable again and we extract the year from it technically because this is a uint8 we can't use this year 
her over here technically you can but this is a more reliable method to do it and then we just subtract the character from it the character is zero so it converts to a a value so we're extracting the two and the four from the string and then converting that to bcd encoding then we take our month value that we calculated up here and we convert that to bcd value into month and then we take our date low and high we just ensure that it fits into four bits and then we extract that out of the date variable day is simple that just comes from day of the week and then we have a secondary macro that is the time of compilation so it's going to be 17 14 05 this is the last time i compiled this and then we just do the same thing that we extract the hours so the 17 so the high value is 1 minus 0 and then 7 minus 0 to convert it to the the nibbles and bcd encoding if you look at this time 1740 36 and i recompile this it looks like it didn't change so i need to change something in the file and then rebuild it you can see the time has changed now all righty then we start some i2c writes to the rtc so the address is 86 shifted by one in an stm32 you have to shift the address by one to make the seven address bits into the most significant bits of the eight bit address so the final bit can be a read or a write bit so you just move that and then the transfer functions in read and write will handle if the least significant bit in the address is set to a zero or a one so what this is it's doing it is taking the control register so zero f and it's setting the two most significant bits of the nibbles so osf and en32 kilohertz now we're not particularly interested in en32 kilohertz its default value is one we are interested in sof which enables and disables the oscillator of the RTC. So currently I'm setting it off by setting the bit to 1. So I'm disabling the clock at boot. Then we change our register that we're writing to the 0 register. So our register is now set to the seconds register. So that will be our first register that we write. This has the ability to auto increment register. So you'll first write register 0, 1, 2, 3, depending on how you set your data up then we copy the date dot time so the entire data if we look at the structure itself going to be this time so these are seven bytes into our register which is eight wide and then we write our register out since we copy the date time over then we write the entire register to the rtc and then once we have written all our date time data we go back to register f and now we are going to set the oscillator enable clock to zero which allows the rtc to run and then we write those two the values into the rtc and then we just set our reg as zero so now we are on our infinite loop we do a i2c write to set the current register as zero and then we transition state to tx done now since it's not currently dma or interrupt base state does not do much so we automatically just run transfer to the read state and when we come back in we are in the read state we read the current time out so what we're doing is, is we are offsetting the register to zero then we read all the way to the year register and if there's any error we return to the right state so we just keep on defaulting back to the right state if there's any error in this process to reset the register then we transfer to rx done which for the same reason tx done does nothing the same reason rx done will do nothing at this stage then we have tx write and we return to the top of our state now outside of our state machine we have our dates and then we use the function date to string to convert the date string technically this should be size of date string i pre-computed this by hand to figure out how long the string should be and then we just write out the data to our uart so if i go and build this and let's just get 
get program the stm32 shutting down and then at the top you can see it's currently if i pull the date up here on the side you can see it is indeed a little bit behind but about approximately the, the correct time that is being held that's a basic introduction to using the i2c on an stm32 with an external rtc a like share comment and subscribe is always appreciated thank you have a nice day